Hello, welcome back. Day 126 of my art development series. If this is your first time here, my name is Angela Wren, and I'm an artist who's documenting my everyday process of practice and how I kind of think about growing as an artist. Uh, so today I'm coming at you with kind of a quick video. So I recently finished um, this large figure drawing that uh, is kind of documented over the previous two videos. Uh, so the first one I had the block in, and the second one I did the uh, I did the values and kind of adding in the shadows and, and the values and the tone, um, and also sharpening up the block in a little bit. Uh, and so what I wanted to do today actually was kind of go back and revisit this idea of values and how to add values to drawings. Um, as I kind of get more comfortable with the block in or feel like I can, you know, more or less uh, get the block into the level that I want to, let's say 90% of the time, uh, now I'm starting to pay a bit, a bit more attention to how I'm adding value uh, to my drawings. And so what I, the way that I've kind of developed, developed the most with block ins and developed the most with drawing just in general has been master copies. Um, so what I wanted to do today was kind of work in a master copy where I focused explicitly on this idea of value or practicing values. <clears throat> so I found this drawing that I took um, from the Watts Atelier Instagram page. Um, and unfortunately, I cannot figure out who the artist was. And when I went back to try and find who it is on the, on the Instagram page, I can't find the post. So I, I'm sure it's there. I just can't seem to locate it. Um, so if anybody else under knows who the artist is um, that I'm doing a master copy of, that would be great if you could, could let me know in the comments. Uh, but either way, they're definitely someone from the Watts Atelier or so to, associated with the uh, Watts Atelier. It could be Ben Young or Eric Gist, but I'm not, not exactly sure. Uh, so either way, I have this uh, drawing that I, I think is like really beautiful. This woman sitting on a chair. Um, and I believe I remember that it was like actually just like a 45 minute drawing that was done. It's not a complete like two or three hour drawing. Um, and so you know, even for it being such a short drawing, I think it's like just perfectly captures uh, the way that I would like to capture value in a drawing. And so what I was trying to do was practice ex like copying almost the exact same stroke that was seen in the, in the drawing itself. Um, so trying to understand how the artist put the value onto the page. And I actually was able to kind of extract a lesson here that I really liked, um, which is this idea that of, of fall off. So if you haven't heard of fall off, uh, it's the idea that th that things that are further away from the light should be a little bit darker. So they might still be in the lights, but they should definitely still be darker than your highlights or the lighter parts of a model. And 95% of the time that you're doing figure drawing, especially from life, uh, or doing portraiture from life, the lighting is always from above. So there's always some kind of overhead lighting that's occurring. Um, and so what that means is anything that's kind of further down the body will always be a little bit darker. And so how that kind of manifests is like on the head, which is kind of like can be thought of as like one form by itself, the further down on the head that you go in your drawing, kind of the darker you should be. So you can actually get away with, you know, having, having darker half tones in the bottom half of the face than like on the forehead, for example. Um, and the same is true for the entire body itself. It's also true for the individual pieces of the body. Like for example, there should be, it should be darker towards the bottom of the torso. It should be darker towards the, as you get further down, you know, um, individual muscle groups it can even be, but even further down the arm towards the forearm, um, you have this property. Uh, but then interestingly, you also have this for the legs in the sense that for the overall body, the legs in a drawing, if you push them and make them a little bit darker, um, it actually tends to read really well and works really well. So I noticed this as I was kind of scrolling through the Instagram page for Watts Atelier, um, and then I, I've mentioned it before, I'm actually taking a class right now with Greg Krutz at the Art Students League of New York, and he mentioned a similar idea in his class. Um, and so what I'm kind of experimenting with lately is always giving the legs one entire value um, so, you know, always giving them starting with like a half tone on over the whole legs and then going darker from there. Um, and if I want to pull out any highlights, they might be around somewhere. It could be on the knee, could be, you know, on the, on the thigh, like on the, um, if, depending on, you know, how the models pose, maybe on the back of the legs, like the hamstring muscles, um, as opposed to the, the quadriceps on the front. Um, but either way, in general, the T the, the lightest part of the body should be the upper torso and the lightest part of the face should be the forehead. Um, and so the legs fall way below the upper part of the torso. So you can actually really get away with pushing them into darkness. 
Um, so that was one of the lessons that I took away from this drawing. Um, and just in general, like just kind of got to work on my value control and kind of exercise that. So you can expect to see more of this in the near future um, as I kind of move further from wanting to practice block-ins to more towards practicing uh, values or like more finished drawings and things like that. So that's everything for today. We'll see you again, see each other again tomorrow for day, I believe it will be 126, 27, um, something, I'm not sure if that's exactly right, uh, but either way, we will see each other tomorrow.